talking to some of the boys, there was really positive feedback around the Super Rugby AU comp. Um, you know, just a lot of good vibes, good crowds. As, as Christy mentioned, an Aussie team was winning every game, obviously. Um, but they enjoyed it a lot more this year um, than last year. It was a proper competition. It felt genuine. Um, and there was a lot of positivity from from players and spectators alike. So, you know, I would like to start the year with the Super Rugby AU. I don't think you need to verse everyone twice. Um, you verse everyone once and then just have a two verse one grand final at the at seed one home stadium. Um, and then you go into a trans Tasman comp. But I would I would structure it instead of versing every team once, um, as we're seeing at the moment, which which isn't working, I would I would have two pools um, and go off the seeds off the Super Rugby AU and Super Rugby um, NZ comp. So you can structure it a little bit more where you can see a clear pathway where Aussie teams will make the finals and Kiwi teams will make the finals, obviously, too. Um, so, yeah, I think the Kiwis have to realise that we want to play New Zealand teams week in, week out, too, but it's a very different market in Australia. Um and they've got to come to the table there too in terms of, you know, creating a competition where Australian fans will rock up to the stadium and turn the TVs on every weekend. The guys like who, is, who are playing well in, in Trans-Tasman were also playing very well in AU. So Robbie Valentini, you know, for instance, stepped up his game um, exponentially this year. This has been a, an absolute breakout season for him. And he's played Test Rugby before, but to be fair, he probably hasn't, like no, deserved it necessarily because he hasn't dominated Super Rugby, uh, and he's dominated Super Rugby AU, and he's taken that same form into Trans Tasman. So I don't think you can have the argument that the players necessarily need to be playing New Zealand players to to, to lift their um, elevate their games because we're seeing that already in AU. The the top players are playing to that standard, I think. Um, but but in addition to that, we've had you know uh, I know. Uh, I harp back on Rod Kafer from time to time because he makes some valid points. But the Wallabies haven't won a playlist load since 2002. So what? why is that? There's been plenty of good players come through the system. Why haven't they won since 2002? And is it because we're just playing New Zealand rugby all the time and there are things like mental scarring that take place? Um, I think it has to be – I don't think you can brush it away because we know that England – they nearly pushed the All Blacks. They pushed them right into the death in 2018 and probably should have won the game. And then they beat them a year later in 2019 and they hardly played them for four or five years. So <clears throat> we love to compare New Zealand because they're right next to us and they play a great brand of rugby. But are they always necessarily what Australian rugby needs? And I know that we're talking about it now, but it has to be thought of. I think this idea that high performance means you have to play the All Blacks or New Zealand. We're obviously still seeing the pandemic affect things, guys, as well. Obviously, last week, um, the Highlanders-Rebels game was moved from from Queenstown to, to Leichhardt Oval in Sydney over the weekend at pretty short notice. Um, the Chiefs are in a little bit of limbo at the moment. They're hanging around in, in northern Queensland, I think, until Wednesday, um, just in case, you know, as it looks, this lockdown could be extended and um, that bubble clearance for the Rebels won't actually open up for them to get across to to New Zealand, that game could also be moved to Sydney. Um, who's to say we might not be in a similar situation again next year? So for all intents and purposes, is running what we had this year um, the right course of action considering that as well? And you, I think your confidence point there, Chrissy, was a good one around Valentini. Izzy Parisi is another one for mine. You, you give these guys another opportunity to build that confidence again next year. And, and we really try and focus on from a high performance perspective around the Rebels and the Force. We know the Force are already making off-season moves, but how do we bolster these this Rebel squad probably in particular? We know the Waratahs, there's just a few little green shoots starting to come through. Uh, Angus Bell is another one who's just really playing the house down and getting great support up front from, from Harry Johnson Holmes. Now, had they been playing in, in Trans-Tasman this entire time this year, do we think they would have come on as much as they had? And while they're still losing now, Lockie, um, they're still starting to play some some very good rugby in patches from an individual perspective. 